Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is the end of my first week teaching on this subject, The War is Over. I tell you, this is powerful. This has changed my life. These truths have totally changed my life. And I tell you, this is stuff that is not being shared very often by many ministers. I'm saying some things that are radically different than the way most people think, but that's the reason that they aren't experiencing the fullness of what God has for them. So I have this book that's over a 200-page book, but then we also have this little booklet that is an introduction to this truth of the war is over. And then we have CDs, DVDs, and study guide in English and in Spanish. And I would encourage you to please take advantage of these materials. You aren't going to hear people say these things very often. So I started in Luke chapter 2 where the angels were singing and they said, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. And I was sharing that that's not peace among men the way that it's traditionally interpreted. It's peace from God towards man. How could there be peace between God and man when there was a war declared on sin? In the Old Testament, you see the wrath of God coming upon sin. And there's just many scriptures that go along with this. I used Isaiah chapter 40 where he said to speak comfortably to the people of Israel that her warfare is accomplished, that she has received double for all of her sins. That doesn't mean that Israel has suffered twice as much as all of their sins deserved. It was talking about that Jesus took the wrath of God and suffered for the sins of the whole world and paid a price that was way, way more than the sins of the entire human race would have cost. We've already been talking about this for nearly a week, and we've got a lot of materials that go along with it, and I encourage you to please get that. Let me just continue to go through the book of Isaiah here for a little bit and show you some of the things that were said. And from Isaiah chapter 40 on up through 53, 54, chapter 54, you find all of these prophecies about what the Messiah would do and how he would liberate the Jews. And of course, the Jews were the focal point here in this, uh, these passages of Scripture, but really this is for the entire human race, not just the Jews by themselves. So let me go down to chapter 52. This is Isaiah chapter 52. And it says in verse 13, it says, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. If I had time, I could show you that this is talking about Jesus. These are all prophecies about the Messiah. And it's talking about Jesus will be exalted and extolled and be very high. And it says, As many were astonished at thee, talking about the nation, of uh, Israel and all of the things that they have gone through, all of the punishments, all of the rejection, the captivity and the terrible things that have happened. As many were as astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of man. What this is saying is in the same way that the people of Israel, God's people in the Old Testament had suffered all of these terrible things well, likewise, the Messiah would take all of their sin and he would suffer for them. And some of these words here are words that we don't use a lot in the King James. They're awkward, but the word visage literally means the face. And so when it says his visage was so marred more than any man, this is talking about Jesus, that his face would be marred more than any man has ever been marred. You know, I don't have the words to describe that, but I've seen some terrible things. I remember two guys in one of my Kansas City meetings. This, these both happened in Kansas City, but I had one man come who had a, a towel up over his face, and he was trying to talk to me and asking for prayer, and I told him, I said, I'm sorry, but I can't understand you with that towel over your face. So he took it away, and cancer had eaten away his lips and his nose, and you could see up into his deal, and he had fluids coming out, and that's why he had this towel. It was terrible looking. And it says that Jesus' face was marred more than that. And during that same meeting, I prayed with a man who cancer had eaten out his eye, and this huge growth of cancer was over half of his face. 
It, this says that Jesus, His face was marred more than that. And it goes on to say, and His form more than the sons of man. If you look at this up in some of the other translations, it'll say that He didn't even look human. He wasn't recognizable as being human. You know, we've seen movies about the crucifixion of Jesus, and probably the most graphic that I've seen was uh, Mel Gibson's movie on the Passion of the Christ. And yet, as graphic as that was, as brutal and as mutilated as the body of Jesus was in that movie, He was still recognizable as a person hanging on the cross. And yet this says His face would be marred more than any person's face in history had ever been marred, and His form, His, his uh, resemblance, His appearance would be so that He didn't even look human. He wasn't recognizable as a human. Did you know that there is no amount of beating from the Romans that could, that could do what's described right here? And yet I believe that what this says is absolutely true. So I believe that what really happened was, of course, the Romans beat Jesus and brutalized Him, and it was terrible what was done to His physical body. But also God's wrath came upon Jesus. And did you know that the wages of sin is death? Everything that came as a result of sin is part of that punishment. Sickness came upon Jesus. I believe that every malady that has ever hit the human race came into the physical body of Jesus, and that's the reason He didn't look human. I've actually seen pictures of people that have what they call elephantitis, where I don't know exactly what causes it, but they're, I've seen pictures of people's legs where they just grow into these grotesque shapes and they're, they're deformed. And I believe that when Jesus died on the cross, not only did He take the beating from the Romans, but God's wrath came upon him. Every sickness and every disease came into his body. You can read about that in the 53rd chapter over here. It says in verse 4, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. AND WITH HIS STRIPES WE ARE HEALED. OVER IN MATTHEW CHAPTER 8, JESUS HEALED PETER'S MOTHER-IN-LAW, AND THEN HE HEALED A MULTITUDE OF PEOPLE. AND MATTHEW CHAPTER 8 SAYS THAT ALL OF THIS WAS DONE, THAT IT MIGHT BE FULFILLED, WHICH WAS SPOKEN BY ISAIAH THE PROPHET, SAYING, HIMSELF TOOK OUR INFIRMITIES AND bare OUR SICKNESSES. THAT'S A QUOTATION FROM uh, ISAIAH CHAPTER 53, VERSE 4, where it says, he Surely he hath bored our griefs and carried our sorrows. Those words were interpreted over here as being sicknesses and diseases. Jesus literally took all of the infirmity and the sickness that would ever hit the human race. It entered into his body on the cross. Man, that's amazing. The reason I'm saying all of these things and amplifying this is to show you what the angels were talking about, that the war is over. How could God declare an end to His war on sin? How could God just reach out and embrace those of us who have sinned against Him? It was because He took every bit of His wrath and He put it upon His Son. And Jesus paid the full price for our sin. He didn't pay a portion of it, not a token LITTLE AMOUNT OF uh, THE JUDGMENT OF GOD. HE PAID THE FULL PRICE FOR YOUR SIN AND MY SIN. AND THAT'S WHAT THIS IS DESCRIBING, SO THAT HIS FACE WAS MARRED MORE THAN ANY PERSON WHO HAS EVER LIVED ON THIS PLANET, AND HIS BODY, AS HE HUNG ON THE TREE, DIDN'T EVEN RESEMBLE BEING A HUMAN. HE TOOK EVERY SICKNESS, EVERY DEFORMITY, EVERYTHING THAT THE HUMAN RACE HAS EVER DONE, EVER EXPERIENCED, IT ALL ENTERED INTO THE BODY OF JESUS. MAN, THAT'S AMAZING. THAT IS AMAZING. AND IT SAYS IN THE NEXT VERSE, SO SHALL HE SPRINKLE MANY NATIONS. THE KINGS SHALL SHUT THEIR MOUTHS AT HIM. FOR THAT WHICH HAD NOT BEEN TOLD THEM SHALL THEY SEE, AND THAT WHICH THEY HAD NOT HEARD SHALL THEY CONSIDER. THAT TRULY HAS COME TO PASS. THERE'S BEEN MULTIPLE KINGS THAT HAVE JUST BEEN OVERWHELMED BY WHAT JESUS CAME TO DO. 
AND IN CHAPTER 53, VERSE 1, IT SAYS, WHO HATH BELIEVED OUR REPORT, AND TO WHOM IS THE ARM OF THE LORD REVEALED? BOY, I COULD SAY THE SAME THING TODAY, THAT HOW MANY PEOPLE HAVE REALLY UNDERSTOOD THE PRICE THAT JESUS PAID FOR OUR SINS? MOST PEOPLE DON'T FULLY UNDERSTAND THIS. THEY THINK THAT JESUS WAS JUST A PART OF GOD REDEEMING US, BUT THEY DON'T SEE THAT HE PAID THE FULL PRICE. THEY DON'T LOOK TO JESUS AND THINK THAT, MAN, BECAUSE OF HIM, I HAVE COMPLETE ACCESS TO GOD THE FATHER, NOT not BASED ON ANYTHING THAT I'VE DONE, BUT BASED SOLELY UPON WHAT JESUS HAS DONE. THERE'S VERY FEW PEOPLE THAT HAVE BELIEVED THAT REPORT. THERE'S VERY FEW PEOPLE THAT HAVE RECEIVED THAT. I WOULD SAY EVEN MOST CHRISTIANS BELIEVE THAT JESUS PAID A PORTION. HE MIGHT HAVE KNOCKED OFF, YOU KNOW, THE WORST PART OF the GOD'S JUDGMENT, BUT WE STILL, uh, YOU KNOW, ARE OFFENDING GOD AND WE'RE SEPARATED FROM GOD WHEN WE SIN AND WE'VE GOT TO REPENT AND DO THESE THINGS TO GET BACK INTO RIGHT STANDING. WE'VE GOT TO REAPPLY THE BLOOD EVERY TIME WE SIN. MOST PEOPLE HAVE NOT FULLY UNDERSTOOD THIS, AND BECAUSE OF IT, THEY AREN'T FULLY APPRECIATING WHAT GOD HAS DONE FOR US. WE HAVE NOT REALLY MAGNIFIED THE ATONEMENT OF JESUS THE WAY WE SHOULD. It GOES ON TO SAY IN VERSE 2, FOR HE SHALL GROW UP BEFORE HIM AS A TENDER PLANT AND AS A ROOT OUT OF DRY GROUND. A TENDER PLANT MEANS THAT, YOU KNOW, he, IT WAS, it was uh, FRAGILE. IT WAS uh, SUBJECT TO BEING CRUSHED OR SOMETHING LIKE THAT. WHEN JESUS ENTERED IN TO A PHYSICAL BODY, THAT PHYSICAL BODY BECAME SUSCEPTIBLE TO THINGS THAT YOU AND I ARE SUSCEPTIBLE TO. NOW, BECAUSE HE WAS SINLESS, I DON'T BELIEVE THAT HE HAD ANY PROPENSITY FOR SIN. I DON'T BELIEVE HE HAD ANY SICKNESS IN HIM AND THINGS LIKE THAT. BUT HE ENTERED INTO A BODY THAT SUFFERED PAIN, THAT SUFFERED BEING TIRED, THAT SUFFERED BEING HUNGRY. HE, he GREW UP AS A TENDER PLANT AND AS A ROOT OUT OF DRY GROUND. AND HE HATH NO FORM NOR COMELINESS. AND WHEN WE SHALL SEE HIM, THERE IS NO BEAUTY THAT WE SHOULD DESIRE HIM. YOU KNOW, THIS JUST AMAZES ME. THIS IS SAYING THAT JESUS' PHYSICAL BODY, IT WAS SINLESS, IT WAS PURE, BUT IT WASN'T SPECTACULAR. JESUS DIDN'T COME INTO A PERFECT BODY. YOU KNOW, IF I WOULD HAVE BEEN GOD, AND I, I DOUBT VERY SERIOUSLY THAT I WOULD HAVE LOVED THE HUMAN RACE ENOUGH TO LEAVE BEING IN ETERNITY AND LIMIT MYSELF TO A PHYSICAL BODY. I, I CAN'T EVEN RELATE TO DOING THAT. BUT IF FOR SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER, I, IF I WAS GOD AND IF I WAS GOING TO BECOME MAN, I'D HAVE BEEN THE BEST SPECIMEN OF FLESH THAT THIS WORLD HAD EVER SEEN. I'D HAVE MADE HERCULES OR, YOU KNOW, WHOEVER LOOK PUNY COMPARED TO ME. I'D HAVE BEEN TALLER THAN ANYBODY ELSE. I'D HAVE BEEN MORE HANDSOME. I'D HAVE BEEN THE BEST SPECIMEN OF FLESH THAT THIS WORLD HAD EVER SEEN. BUT IT SAYS THAT JESUS, THERE WAS NO FORM. THAT'S TALKING ABOUT HIS SHAPE OR COMELINESS. THAT'S TALKING ABOUT BEAUTY WHEN WE SHALL SEE HIM. THERE IS NO BEAUTY THAT WE SHOULD DESIRE HIM. THERE WAS NOTHING DESIRABLE ABOUT JESUS. I DON'T BELIEVE THAT JESUS WAS UGLY. I DON'T BELIEVE THAT he, HE WAS GROTESQUE OR ANYTHING LIKE THAT, BUT I DON'T BELIEVE THAT HE WAS SPECIAL. JESUS WAS JUST AS NORMAL AS I AM OR ANYBODY ELSE. BOY, THIS IS AMAZING TO ME. IT'S AMAZING THE WAY THAT GOD HUMBLED HIMSELF. YOU KNOW, THE BIBLE SAYS IN HEBREWS CHAPTER 11, VERSE 6, THAT WITHOUT FAITH IT'S IMPOSSIBLE TO PLEASE GOD. GOD DELIGHTS IN DOING THINGS IN A WAY THAT IT TAKES FAITH FOR PEOPLE TO PERCEIVE WHAT'S HAPPENING. YOU KNOW, IN A SENSE, THE BIBLE JUST TALKS ABOUT THAT it's, THERE'S A SCRIPTURE THAT SAYS OUT OF HIS MOUTH HE CREATED THE SONS. THAT CAME OUT OF HIS MOUTH. HE SPOKE IT AND THE SUN, OUR SUN IS ONE OF THE SMALLER SUNS IN THE UNIVERSE ACCORDING TO WHAT THE ASTRONOMERS SAY. AND YET OUR SUN IS SO INTENSE. THIS LAST WEEK I WAS OUT AND WHEN THE SUN CAME UP AND DIRECT SUNLIGHT HIT ME, IMMEDIATELY YOU COULD FEEL THE HEAT FROM THIS SUN THAT IS MILLIONS OF MILES AWAY. THAT CAME OUT OF HIS MOUTH. THAT'S WHO HE IS. HE IS SO AWESOME. AND OUR SUN IS ONE OF THE SMALLER SUNS. I'VE READ SOME THINGS ABOUT SOME OF THE OTHER STARS THAT THEY SAY OUR SUN COULD FIT IN THERE A HUNDRED TIMES OVER. IT'S JUST AMAZING TO THINK OF WHO GOD IS AND WHAT HE HAS. AND YET, WHEN HE BECAME A MAN, THERE WAS NOTHING SPECIAL ABOUT HIM. THERE WAS NO COMELINESS. THERE WAS NO BEAUTY THAT WE SHOULD DESIRE HIM. 
That's amazing. I believe that Jesus not only suffered on the cross, but for 33 years until He went to the cross, He just suffered being ignored, being rejected. If He was standing in a crowd, people would have walked right by Him. He's the one that created them. He's the one that created the heavens and the earth. He's the one that made all of this possible. And yet people just walked by Him, not even knowing who He was. That's amazing. That was a part of the suffering of the Lord is to take Almighty God and to make Him just so that He's nothing special. His physical body was nothing to be desired. That's amazing. It says in the next verse, He is despised and rejected of man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from Him. He was despised and we esteemed Him not. AGAIN, IF YOU REALLY THINK ABOUT THAT JESUS WAS GOD ALMIGHTY, IT SAYS IN COLOSSIANS CHAPTER 1 THAT ALL THINGS WERE CREATED BY HIM, TALKING ABOUT JESUS, AND WITHOUT HIM WAS NOT ANYTHING MADE THAT WAS MADE. THE ENTIRE UNIVERSE, EVERYTHING WAS MADE BY JESUS, AND YET HERE HE IS DESPISED AND REJECTED BY THE PEOPLE THAT HE CREATED. I GUARANTEE YOU THERE'S PROBABLY NOT A ONE OF US THAT IF WE HAD SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER CREATED THIS HUMAN RACE AND THEN WE CAME DOWN HERE TO REDEEM THEM AND TO SAVE THEM AND THEY REJECTED US, WE'D HAVE JUST WIPED THEM ALL OUT. WE'D HAVE USED OUR POWER AND STUFF, AND YET JESUS HUMBLED HIMSELF AND BECAME OBEDIENT UNTO DEATH, EVEN THE DEATH OF THE CROSS IS WHAT IT SAYS IN PHILIPPIANS CHAPTER 2. THIS IS JUST AMAZING, THE LOVE THAT HE HAD FOR US, THAT HE SUFFERED NOT ONLY the, THE CRUCIFIXION AND THE BEATING OF THE ROMANS, BUT HE JUST SUFFERED REJECTION. HE SUFFERED BEING NORMAL, BEING NOTHING SPECIAL FOR 33 YEARS. IN VERSE 4 IT SAYS, SURELY HE HATH borne OUR GRIEFS AND CARRIED OUR SORROWS, YET WE DID ESTEEM HIM STRICKEN, SMITTEN OF GOD, AND AFFLICTED. THAT'S AMAZING. IN VERSE 5 IT SAYS, HE WAS WOUNDED FOR OUR TRANSGRESSIONS. HE WAS BRUISED FOR OUR INIQUITIES. THE CHASTISEMENT OF OUR PEACE WAS UPON HIM, AND WITH HIS STRAPS WE ARE HEALED. JESUS SUFFERED ALL OF THIS NOT FOR HIMSELF. DID YOU KNOW GOD COULD HAVE JUST TAKEN THE WHOLE HUMAN RACE AND HAVE WIPED US OUT, AND IT WOULDN'T HAVE CHANGED WHO HE WAS? HE DIDN'T HAVE TO HAVE US. WE NEEDED HIM. GOD HUMBLED HIMSELF, AND HE CAME TO THIS EARTH, AND GOD BECAME A MAN NOT TO SUFFER FOR HIMSELF. HE DIDN'T DO THIS TO REDEEM HIMSELF. HE DID IT VOLUNTARILY TO REDEEM US. ALL OF THESE THINGS WERE DONE FOR US. HE WAS WOUNDED FOR OUR TRANSGRESSIONS, BRUISED FOR OUR INIQUITIES. THE CHASTISEMENT OF OUR PEACE WAS UPON HIM. AND WITH HIS STRIPES WE ARE HEALED. YOU KNOW, THIS IS ONE OF THE REASONS THAT I DON'T... Um, I HAVE COMPASSION ON PEOPLE. BUT I DON'T VALIDATE PEOPLE'S SUFFERING. I DON'T KNOW IF THAT COMMUNICATES. BUT WHEN PEOPLE GO THROUGH SOMETHING AND THEY SUFFER, I CAN HAVE COMPASSION ON THEM AND I CAN DESIRE TO SEE THEM CHANGED AND DO THINGS, BUT I, I DON'T FEEL SORRY FOR THEM BECAUSE GOD HAS PROVIDED EVERYTHING THAT THEY NEED. HE WAS WOUNDED FOR THEIR TRANSGRESSIONS. HE WAS BRUISED FOR THEIR INIQUITIES. HE SUFFERED GRIEF. THE CHASTISEMENT OF OUR PEACE WAS UPON HIM. HE BORE OUR GRIEFS AND CARRIED OUR SORROWS. AND I CAN UNDERSTAND THAT PEOPLE HAVE THINGS HAPPEN AND THAT THEY GET HURT, AND I CAN HAVE COMPASSION ON THEM AND WANT TO SEE THEM COME OUT OF THAT, BUT I CAN'T JUST FEEL SORRY FOR THEM BECAUSE GOD HAS PROVIDED EVERYTHING THAT THEY NEED, AND IF THEY AREN'T ACCESSING HIS POWER, THEN THAT'S A FAULT ON THEIR PART. IT MAY BE BECAUSE OF IGNORANCE THAT THEY'RE DOING IT, BUT NONETHELESS, I JUST, I, I RUN OUT OF PATIENCE SOMETIMES WHEN PEOPLE WANT TO SIT THERE AND GRIEVE OVER THINGS THAT HAVE HAPPENED TO THEM WHEN JESUS BORE THEIR GRIEFS. IF JESUS BORE THEIR GRIEF, WHY ARE YOU GOING TO BEAR IT? YOU KNOW, I'VE BEEN THROUGH A LOT OF THINGS. I'VE HAD A LOT OF NEGATIVE THINGS HAPPEN. I HAD MY SON DIE. AND PRAISE GOD, HE WAS RAISED FROM THE DEAD AFTER BEING DEAD BETWEEN FOUR AND FIVE HOURS. AND SO I HAVEN'T GONE THROUGH THE TOTAL THING THAT OTHER PEOPLE HAVE GONE THROUGH, BUT I DID GO... I DID START HAVING TO DEAL WITH THE DEATH OF A SON. AND I UNDERSTAND THAT THAT'S A TERRIBLE THING. I'M NOT CRITICIZING OR CONDEMNING A PERSON WHO HAS LOST ANOTHER PERSON, BUT FOR YOU TO JUST SPEND THE REST OF YOUR LIFE 
mourning and carrying that grief. I can understand how things may never be exactly the same, but for you to be grieving when Jesus bore your griefs and carried your sorrows, I can have compassion for you, but I do not uh, pity you because Jesus has borne that grief and you just aren't accessing what He's got. And I know that there's a lot of people that will reject me over that and they'll disagree with that, but that's because I value and prize what Jesus did. If Jesus bore my griefs and carried my sorrows, I'm not going to carry him. I refuse to do it. And when my son died, I started feeling all the grief. I started feeling these things, and yet I just went to these exact scriptures. And I said, I am not going to grieve over this. Jesus bore my griefs and carried my sorrows. And I started praising God before we heard the report that he had come back to life. Before I heard those things, I started glorifying God and just praising him that I don't care what happens, Jesus bore my grief and carried my sorrow. I've done this. I've been through a lot of bad things. I've been through things that I can guarantee you without Jesus, I would have grieved and I would have had sorrow. I've been through some things that I honestly thought, how do I live through this? This is more than I can bear. And yet I went to the scriptures. It says 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that uh, there is no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted Above that you are able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. And right when I felt like I couldn't bear any more, I've said, God, I know you're faithful. And I just started praising God and drawing on this. Again, I have compassion towards people. I understand that we've got an enemy that's just destroying lives and causing mayhem. And there's people watching this program that you've had really tragic things happen to you. I'm not denying that. But I am saying that Jesus has borne whatever grief, whatever sorrow you've ever had, whatever sickness you've ever had in such a way that you do not have to bear it. So I can have compassion toward you, but I have enough compassion to tell you the truth that you don't have to stay that way. You can cast this care over on the Lord. You can turn to the Lord and God can come and totally heal your heart and set you free from whatever has gone on. SO I AM NOT ONE OF THOSE THAT'S JUST GOING TO SIT THERE AND HUG YOU AND SAY, YEAH, IT'S REALLY BAD. AND SO I UNDERSTAND YOU'RE JUST GOING TO LIMP THROUGH LIFE THE REST OF YOUR LIFE. NO, I BELIEVE JESUS CAN MAKE YOU WHOLE AND BRING YOU BACK TO WHERE, MAN, YOU ARE MORE THAN A CONQUEROR. I DON'T CARE WHAT SATAN HAS DONE IN YOUR LIFE. I WANT TO THANK YOU FOR WATCHING OUR YOUTUBE CHANNEL AND THE PROGRAMS THAT WE HAVE AVAILABLE. AND I WANT TO ENCOURAGE YOU THAT YOU CAN GET THE MATERIALS THAT WE'VE OFFERED. ALSO, I'D LIKE TO ENCOURAGE YOU TO LIKE OUR PROGRAM AND SUBSCRIBE TO WHAT WE'RE DOING. WE HAVE A LOT OF MATERIAL AND I BELIEVE IT'LL BE A REAL BLESSING TO YOU. SO THANK YOU FOR BEING A PART OF IT. GOD BLESS YOU.